Hello everyone. Today we're going to convert incomplete contour lines into complete polygons and subsequently into rasters to be used in species distribution models and other kinds of models. The first step is to import the contour lines into JS. Uh, for simplicity reasons, I'm using QGS today. And as you can see on my screen, you can see uh, some presence points, locations, and the, the contour lines. And what we're trying to do is we can, if we can look at all these, these contour lines, we're going to um, close the ones that are not complete and then convert them into polygons and then convert the polygons into rasters. So the first step is to ensure that all the contour lines are continuous. So it have to be one or multiple polygons. And as you can see here, we want to, want to make one polygon uh, within which, which contains all these uh, presence points. So we're going to try to select, okay, I'm trying to select one contour line to see where it ends and where it starts. So we can see here that's gonna, it ends here and then it goes all the way around here and it goes all the way up there. And the other one we want to include here is this one. And so we're starting to see, okay, this one goes until here and we have to connect basically this point with the point about there to ensure that it's all one polygon. So the first step is to indeed uh, connect them and that can be done with this method I will show here. Um, we're going to connect this one with this one. So we're going to try to connect this line with this line. And this is done by right clicking here, or just by um, selecting the, the layer that's desired to be changed. Click on top editing, the intermediate. So we zoom in, we make sure that we click on this end, and then we have to have at least four vertices. And I'm connected. And I'll right click, and then we just type any number in here, and then OK. Repeat this for this step. We again type in one, and then repeat this for all the, the gaps we want to fill. And we do this until all our lines are one polygon. And for now, I will speed this up. All right, welcome back. We just um, connected all the lines that I wanted to connect. And what we're going to do now is select all the lines that we want to have included our um, polygon, and then we're going to dissolve them. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this button here, so select features. We have to click on our layer that we want to use. Click, we click on it, and then we also press control. And then we do this for all the parts of the control line. We want to have included in our polygon. So we look until the point this one goes. We want to create this line here. <coughs> and click here as well, zoom in a little bit covered all of them. And then we do this for all the parts of the lines. And you have to make sure that all of the parts that you have uh, connected beforehand are also selected. Otherwise, it has, been, it has to be updated afterwards, which is not ideal. So we want to select all of these. And then once you are sure that all of the parts of the contour line are selected and are in yellow, and you go on the top and you're going to select vectors, geoprocessing tools, and then dissolve. Then this layer that's selected is already the input layer. You press on selected features only, then you create, you are going to select a directory where you want to save the file, and we're going to save it here. to run this 
and now this line has to be uh, should have been completely selected. What we can do to try and see if all the parts are um, connected we wanted to connect is we select it again and then see if all the parts lit up yellow. That means that the, the line is complete and continuous. So in our case, it's completely continuous and we can move on. So the next step is, is to export a shapefile, which has already been done automatically by dissolving it. But after that, we're going to move to ArcGIS. The reason for this is that we are going to convert this basically um, contour line into a polygon. This can also be done here in QGIS uh, by using this tool here. Uh, what is it called? Lines to polygon. However, my experience, this did not work uh, very well all the time because it primarily looks for the shortest distance and we don't want that in this case. So we're going to use ArcGIS for this. So we're going to import the data. We have it here. And um, we are going to, um, here is it imported. Then next we're going to select the feature in the analysis tools, which is called feature to polygon. Then we are going to the import back to import feature is going to be the one we just worked on recently. Then we have to select the output directory, which in this case is going to be this one. We have this. this is then of course different for whatever you are uh, working on. And then this can be left free. Environments don't really matter for this um, step right now. Run this. This might take a couple of seconds, but it should be pretty fast. Then uh, the output is your polygon. This is now saved as shapefile, which is very useful for everything else we'll do afterwards. As next step, we have to transform this into a raster. So the first step that we have to take in order to transfer the, transform this into a raster that can be used for, for example, species distribution models, is that we are going to import a raster which has the same cell size, the same extent as the one that we have to use for all the for other rasters, for instance, the, the ones that we use in the species distribution models. So how we do that is we import one raster that has that extent and the cell size we want. For me, in this case, it's this one. <clears throat> then once this is imported, we are going to uh, transform our created polygon into a raster. We are going to select the tools and then they were going to use feature to raster. We're going to select our polygon as feature. We're going to use this FID in this case for the field we want to use. Output raster, we have to select that one. In this case, it should be fine with for me. And the output cell size that determines how big your output cells should be. So as you can see the Beneath here, these are one. This is one cell size, and this is one cell size in the whole, in the other layer. We want to also use this for this layer, so they can be used both together in other models. And I am grabbing this cell size from QJS, where I have this uh, ready. Uh, you can find it. I have imported the same file also in QJS, and you can find the cell size very easily there. You right click on the file. Uh, properties and then if you scroll down you can find the pixel size here you just copy that and then you you paste it into uh, ArcGIS here and then in the environments we are going to select the output coordinate system we're going to use the same as from this uh, raster imported and the same goes for the extent so we're also using this one and then everything looks good, and we're running this. And this might take a couple of seconds, but it should be rather fast. And then the output of this should be a raster. 
which can then be seen uh, and used for other models. That now, if if you want to use, uh, if you want to determine also distance from every point to this rest to these um, pixel files. So if I remove this, now you can see the raster. This is not a raster, um, and that's how you create the contours into polygons and the rasters. And if you want to have a distance from each point to those raster points, you can create the Euclid Euclidean distance. And I made a previous video about that. You can check that out if you want to uh, do that for species distribution models. But for this video, uh, this is the end. I hope all the questions are clear now. I hope you understood how this can be done. And in case there are any further questions, you can send me an email with the uh, email address in the description and also my research gate link, or you can also contact me. And I hope it was, was useful. Thank you very much and have a good day.